I came from an area where we didn't have a lot of money. Then I would go to my father and I'd be around people that had a ton of money. So I knew where I was and I knew where I wanted to be, okay. you know? So yeah, I had to yeah. I pull myself up and I, everything I have, I built, I did it myself. You know, the fact is, is that, you know, I grew up all hip hop. I, I didn't yeah. listen to heavy metal or rock music. I was okay. listening to hip hop. I grew up with very Street. big names in the industry that lived around the block. That these were friends of mine, you know, growing up and I'm still friends with a couple of them. And when I was drumming, I was playing to a hip hop style. I learned how to play hip hop before I learned how to yeah. play rock. So being okay. in being in a band is like being in a in a four-way, five-way marriage, okay? Oh. And um, everybody knows that sometimes regular marriages with one person doesn't work out. So when you've got all those personalities stewing together and traveling and, and trying to, yeah. you know, create music and create, you know, um, a, a following and so forth, and egos get involved, and, you know, when and people big. are... Yeah, when people are moving forward and other people aren't, or somebody's getting more attention, but they feel that you should, they should be getting attention. You know, it was slow. It was like a, a Friday evening. They said, "Listen, um, we're short-handed on photographers uh, for this weekend," and and Bill was going to do a story on a wrestling event in in the the, the wrestlers they're in, um, and they needed somebody to go take pictures. So I said, "Sure, I love wrestling. It's a lot of fun." I, so we went down, and um, this is how it started. This is how it started. This is how the wrestling is yeah. where Brimstone came from. Uh, you know, I I went there and um, and then Brett, uh, because they knew why I was there. They knew I was there to take mm-hmm. pictures of the publication. Uh, Brett had Look. known, you know, I took pictures of Brett earlier. He had overheard this. And um, okay. he said to me, he goes, uh, he goes, uh, How your story got started as like we are in a school phase you know growing up phase school phase as a kids and then uh, we start growing up with college days and something strikes to us and we start okay this is my thing this is my thing and then we start figuring out okay and then you choose okay now this is me this is how i'm going to be so uh, can you recall that particular phase uh, at this moment like how things happen with you in like growing up so, and childhood and all so it was a little it was a little um I guess I was I was thrust into it um, at an early age. So I started my career in entertainment at five years old. Um, my mother, um, you know, my parents were divorced, and, and my mother, okay. um, you know, thought that I could do some stuff. I know, you know, people always say, "Oh, your kid is cute," and so forth, and they should be <laughs> in this, or they should do that. And I was a lot cuter yeah. when I was younger. So <laughs> they, um, <laughs> they, what do you call it? Uh, my mother had put me into. Um, into acting and she got me into a bunch of auditions and um i started my career um as a child actor on sesame street and romper room uh which are wow. two um old american programs i think they might have sesame street out in uh, in india as well um you know i know they they translate into a bunch of different languages so yeah, yeah. Uh, it is possible that you guys have uh, I, I do believe you have sesame street there um uh, but sesame street for me um, I live in New York. I live on Long Island. Mm-hmm. I'm about 45 minutes mm-hmm. on a good day, three hours on a bad day wow. to New York City. So, um, you know, and, wow. and into Queens. So, uh, yeah, I think um, it's Kaufman Studios, I believe, is where they filmed it. And they still film it there. Um, it's in, uh, you know, it's in Queens, just outside of uh, New York City. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, we drove in and, and filmed uh, Sesame Street when I was, you know, a little little kid. And you know, same thing with Romper Room. I remember more about Sesame Street than Romper Room. Um, no. you know, I did a bunch of commercials, um, and, and auditioned for a lot more commercials. Um, you know, but there's just so much you can remember at that age, but that was the first, uh, taste of, uh, entertainment for me. And, um, yeah. you know, As then, a kid. uh, being from, what was that? As a kid, like growing up that first clip. As a, right. Yeah. Right. It was a, it was a, you know, a little bit of a nibble and, mm. uh, the fact that it was on such an iconic show, like a Sesame street and a romper room, it was, um, you know, it was a, a good start, I would say. And and funny enough, yeah. not to fast forward, but years later, um, I reconnected with a couple of members of the cast that, that I had worked with. The, you know, obviously the people that had um, been a lot older than me. I was a kid at the time. And, yeah. uh, you know, I got to reconnect with Carol Spinney, who uh, was Big Bird, who I did scenes with, and uh, Oscar the Grouch. You know, that was uh, both Carol Spinney, um, as yeah, well yeah. as a couple other people that, that I had uh, worked with on the show uh, as a kid. Uh, and then, yeah. and funny enough, uh, with so Carol and I had done a bunch of, of um, um, conventions together. We did a couple of 
uh, speaking engagements together, which was great. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it was it was just uh, you know a great opportunity for everything to kind of come full circle with yeah. that, um, which was which was beautiful. And um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm very very grateful that I had the opportunity and, and continued on my path that I did have the chance to get back and meet with Carol again and his wife and and uh, have the opportunity to kind of get to know him better as an adult. You know what I mean? Outside of the, yeah. the you know of the television yeah. uh, deal. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That, just that networking said, with good people. Yeah, networking. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was you know as a kid, my, like I mentioned earlier, my parents were divorced. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. My mother and my father couldn't necessarily always agree on, uh, you know, when was the right time to take me on to auditions if they happened to be on weekends or days that my father was supposed mm. to see me. And so rather than working together, they kind of butted heads, and it is what it Ooh. is. And, and that was that. So that ended the the uh, the entertainment thing at that point in time. God. Um. I then fell in love as a kid uh, with um, comic books. Huge, huge Whoa. lover of comic books. Uh, so like Marvel, know, DC? Marvel. Marvel, Marvel. Fan, DC? I, Marvel fan. I did oh, have awesome. a lot of DC books. I'm not going to lie. Okay. I did have DC books, but I was never <laughs> really into any DC characters the way I was into okay. Marvel characters. Marvel awesome. characters are, you know, that much more well evolved and and so forth. Mm. Uh, but you know, I, I always had the who's who for DC and all the books and Justice League and Batman and Superman, of course. Um, oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> so you know, I I, I you know I, I did um, always love them, but I always. Uh, you know, more so I love Spider-Man and the X-Men and, uh, you know, different Marvel characters that were just, um, you know, yeah. the Hulk iconic Daredevil. So that being mm -hmm. said, um, you know, I, I wanted to be a, um, a comic book artist at first. I, that was my one of the first things I wanted to do. And I used to draw and I, did, I was pretty decent uh, for my age. You know, my um, my mother always wanted me to you know, continue to pursue, you know, the art thing or something in entertainment. But, um, you know, it was, it was like, um, you know, one of the things I really wanted to do. I, I, I really, I spent a lot of time drawing. I still have a lot of pieces wow. of my old, you know, art, a lot of the comic drawings, um, yeah. not to where it should have been or could have been per se, mm -hmm. if I continued, but it wasn't yeah. bad for, you know, being a, a kid. But then mm -hmm. what happened is I went, when I was in elementary school, I wound up, um, you know, that, you know, I, I don't know how it is over, over by you, but here in the States, you usually start with, you know, um, first you start with the, the little uh, recorder, <laughs> the little recorder, the little flute. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, then they put you into orchestra. So you're stuck yep, playing like yep. violin or something, which I played violin. Like, like um, primary and... school, like primary things. <laughs> exactly. Basic things to start with. Right. And Got then, it. then when I was um, a year in, they gave us the opportunity to join band if we wanted to. And I was introduced wow. to the drums. And um, mm -hmm. that's kind of what shaped a lot of my future um, in entertainment. Mm -hmm. Because again, mm -hmm. going back to your original question of how this happened, you know, yes, um, yes, yes. I, I fell head over heels in love like, with music. Um, mm -hmm. And I was a drummer for many years. I started in elementary school. I drummed all throughout middle school, high school. Um, I went to private Great. school for a few years. I was in my first bands there, um, you know, and then, uh, you know, I went from, um, uh, you know, into, into to college, you know, for music. Yeah. I studied yeah. music and then I went touring, you know, as a musician right out of school. Yeah. I didn't even finish my, my, my final year of college because I was mm -hmm. out playing. Um, so that started my, That's, my career yeah. in entertainment. Got it. Got it. So I keep on hearing, I kept on hearing lots of things about you, uh, how you started and you're a complete artist you know just not one thing at a time you did lots of things and that's why you are now still managing a lot of things you were prepared for that you know it's not just like you just started doing when you became an adult this was a schooling phase you know drumming orchestra then joining a band then doing uh acting thing being a part being a part as an artist taking part in every single thing that is where the grooming happened for you your right. parents, uh, I kept on hearing your parents played a major part uh, when it come, came to auditioning and when it came to film and artists. But mm -hmm. uh, one, one thing I just want to ask you is I kept on hearing like uh, your mom and dad kind of uh, combined in the initial phase to you to grow you as an artist. How the divorce played in part, you know, how were you like how you uh, handled that phase of your mom and dad getting separated because i think uh, as a kid i heard about uh, the things i saw like i listened to the that particular part i think uh, you were kind of shattered i don't know how you handled it uh, can you tell me uh, how was that phase for you that particular divorce phase you know one year two year i don't know but can you explain that 
it was very confusing, you know, because again, mm -hmm. as a kid, you always think, well, did I do something wrong? You know, what, what's, what's going on? And, you know, and, but again, you know, um, it, my, my, you know, when they, when they divorced, um, and they separated, mm -hmm. you know, it was just mm -hmm. very different for me. And, um, you know, my father wound up moving into a very, um, I guess you'd say more of a high class, a higher class area, uh, okay. you know, and, and my, my mother and I lived in a place called Uniondale, New York. Now, for mm -hmm. those of you who are not aware of, of, you know, Uniondale, it's yeah. where the world famous Nassau Coliseum is, um, which is okay. one of the hubs of entertainment here in New York for, for many oh. years. Um, it's where okay. every concert, every wrestling match, every, everything came through, you know, All and, related uh, to art. exactly. And, um, you know, but, but in, in Uniondale, um, mm -hmm. you know, it was not as racially diverse as other areas. It was very okay. much, I was one of the only white kids in the entire town. Um, there was a few of us, oh. like literally a handful. Um, so, you know, for me, and not only was I one of the only white kids, but I was the <laughs> only white Jewish kid. So, <laughs> oh God. So, oh God. Yeah. So, that's, that's um, really, you know, really like very different, very interesting. Yep. Um, so, you know, and I got in to New York school. <laughs> yeah. In New York. So, um, you know, so Uniondale, you know, like I said, we were in a, you know, lower middle class uh, area. And then my mm -hmm. father moved to a very affluent area uh, and then mm -hmm. built from there because my father has always been uh, a salesperson. He was also a musician for many years. Okay. He's a singer. He plays guitar. He was all self-taught. And he used to do all the stuff that I wound up doing. You know, like I kind of wow. followed in his <laughs> footsteps a lot. I also followed in my mother's footsteps a lot. So yeah. with them separated, I believe that I had the the opportunity to kind of um, get that alone time with both. Uh, that would mm. kind of shape the way I would become later on in in life, uh, especially okay. because you know it, you know in in like just my personality in 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 entertainment in music yeah um, you know the fact is is that you know I grew up all hip hop I I didn't yeah. listen to heavy metal or rock music I was okay. listening to hip hop I grew up with very Street. big names in the industry that lived around the block that these were friends of mine yeah. you know growing up and i'm still wow. friends with a couple of them um what do you call it uh like uh, i don't know if you guys have uh, have ever heard of leaders of the new school you've heard of buster rhymes buster rhymes mm -hmm. came from leaders of the new school it was the the group uh hip-hop group God. and uh you wow. know c brown around the corner from me uh him and his sisters mm -hmm. and his two sisters were uh the original black double mint twins uh for okay. double mint gum and uh you know dinko lived down the road from me like you know and and you know a lot of very big names in hip hop were always around um from diagonal from me um was uh, my friend shoba whose cousin was in a big group called houdini uh you yeah. know who did the freaks come out at night anyway so uh down the <laughs> down the road this way was uh the cousin of, of ll cool j you know so i got to know yeah. ll um you know mm -hmm. and then i used to work in a a um it was called friendlies friendlies is like an american fair type of uh little okay, you know family okay. restaurant and mm -hmm. uh you know it was an ice cream place and i used to to work there when i was younger and i met and mm -hmm. everybody used to come through there from public enemy i reconnected with flavor Flav a few years back um about 10 years at this point um mm -hmm. you know what do you call it uh, salt and pepper ll was in Good. there you know Bustin and leaders were in there you know so all these big big name players in, in hip-hop would yeah. always be there and they were that, around that's you where yeah, they were around me. So, you know, and, and when I was drumming, I mm -hmm. was playing to a hip hop style. I learned how to play hip hop before I learned how to Good. play rock. So now yeah. when so again, my my mom had me uh, decided, you know, she wanted to put me into a private school. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, she heard that the middle school was a little rough. I'm like, I know everybody. And and I was the kid that <laughs> she didn't necessarily know, but I was out fighting in the streets. You know what I mean? I was wow. you know, throwing down with everybody. So it, it never it never was a problem. You know, I was perfectly fine going to the to the rougher school. But, um, you know, it, it is what it is. So, you know, she wanted to put yeah. me in a private school, which again shaped me more because now I went from being one of the yeah. only white Jewish kids to being mm -hmm. with all white Jewish kids, um, you know, because it was a private Jewish oh, school. God. And uh, God. yeah. And. Um, and that's where but you I adapted, started getting, you adapted. Yeah, I adapted. And that's when I started getting um, into rock music and metal music and then combining the two to create my drumming mm -hmm. style, which is, you know, what I went on to, to you know, play for many, many years before I got out yeah. of being in a five way marriage and music mm -hmm. and bands okay. and got into, you know, pro wrestling. So awesome awesome hope that answers it's, your question i know it's long-winded but i know you might cut this later so. <laughs> no, no 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 i'll keep it completely it's it's completely fine it's it's your story i i want to discover you your journey it will help a lot of people when they listen to the full it will help so right. yeah and uh i kept on hearing like drumming band 
than rock music, uh, than being with the people, being on the street, uh, adapting to the situations, you know, being a Jewish mm. and like four or five, I guess, uh, you, uh, people white and Jewish than adapting to the situation, being the strongest person. And it happened with you with time. How you came into wrestling? The, I guess the whole thing is now about bands, music, and being an artist. How the wrestling thing happened? So, in in music, unless mm -hmm. you are a front person who is pretty much running a group and, or a band and so forth, and you can, you know, kind of, I guess, shift to wherever you need to shift around if somebody's not working out, um, you're okay. in kind of a a marriage of four or five other people. OK, so being oh. in being in a band is like being in a, in a four way, five way marriage. OK, okay. and um, everybody knows that sometimes regular marriages with one person doesn't work out. So when you've got all those personalities <laughs> stewing together and traveling yeah. and, and trying to, yeah. you know, create music and create, mm -hmm. you know, um, a, a following and so forth and egos get involved. And, you know, yeah, when when people big. are. Yeah, when people are moving forward and other people aren't or somebody's getting more attention, but they feel that you should be, yeah. they should be getting attention, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, tensions rise. Some people have, you know, I always wanted to, I said, I want to be able to continue moving forward, building, growing, because again, I came from an area where we didn't have a lot of money. Then I would yeah. go to my father and I'd be around people that had a ton of money. So <laughs> I knew where I was and I knew where I wanted to be, okay. you know, so yeah, I had to, yeah. I, pull myself up and I, everything I have, I built, I did it myself. And, yeah. um, you know, so in music, when I was playing with a couple of guys that I, I, uh, met in college and, you know, we switched a couple different bands around and they, they came from money, you know, they came from, yeah. so, they, you yeah. know, so they wanted to be what we call punk, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, Oh, I'm, I'm not going to sell out. I'm going to, I, I want to live in a van and blah, blah, blah. No, bro. <laughs> you know, I don't want to do that. I, yeah, I want, yeah, I have, yeah. I want to continue growing. You chose, you chose to be, to be rich to, yeah. I want to, I want to be, um, I want to build, I want to be, you know, something much bigger than that. And, yep, um, yep. you know, at the end of the day, uh, I decided that, you know, it was just too much dealing with that many personalities and I wanted to take a little bit of a break. And I only thought, to Ooh. be honest with you, my friend, I thought it was only going to be a little bit of a break. It turns out that <laughs> at that point, um, I had been working cause I did, you know, following my father's footsteps, I did sales, um, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, and that's probably why I do a lot. Again, that's why I'm able to negotiate. I run a couple of a bunch of businesses, yeah. to be honest, and um, negotiate yep. lots of businesses, product deals. You know yeah. what I mean? Endorsements and so yeah, forth. Yeah, licensing so, and deals. Yeah, and I handle it myself. You know, where you awesome. know other people have people doing it for them. I do all my business mm -hmm. for myself. So that's that great. being said, you know, it was um, it was uh, um, time for me to kind of take a yeah, step back. A yeah. And I was working at the time for um, it was called the Long Island Voice, which if anybody is familiar with the, the world famous, it is famous, uh, you know, for mm -hmm. uh, in New mm -hmm. York City, the Village Voice um, publication, yeah. the village, mm -hmm. the, the Long Island Voice was the Village Voice is like little sister publication, um, okay. it, the Stern Publishing at the time and Andrea Stern, which is the daughter of, of the owner. Uh, wanted a plaything. She wanted a project, so she opened up, you know, the, the Long Island Voice with his blessings. And uh, okay. I was pretty high up in sales there. And um, but I was, like I said, you know, I was a jack of all trades. I did photography. Mm. I was in, you know, I was published. I did this. I did that. I sold. And they knew that, you know, I did all these things. They knew that 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 I um, also loved wrestling. And one day, I'm just giving you the quick version. I, I know I talk forever. Uh, <laughs> no, no, go on, go on, go on, go on. The uh, the. I forgot who it was exactly, but the um, I guess the person who handled, um, you know, the assignments uh, had yeah. come over to me. It was slow. It was like a, a Friday evening. They said, listen, um, we're shorthanded on photographers uh, for this weekend. And, um, you know, Bill, who's one of the writers, Bill Jensen, who I also reconnected with later on in life. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. is, he's a, a huge player now. Uh, he does all murder mystery and, you know, uh, stuff. Wow. Now. Huge. Bill Jensen. Uh, you could look him up. And uh, funny that the two of us went on to do other things. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Bill was going to do a story on a wrestling event and in the, the, okay. the wrestlers they're in. Um, and they mm -hmm. needed somebody to go take pictures. So I said, sure, I love wrestling. It's a lot of fun. I, you know, why yeah. not? We used to, when I was a kid, I'd be, uh, you know, in the, in the, the Hebrew school, not the Hebrew school, in the, uh, the private school that I went to, the Jewish school, uh, everybody, they used to have all the pay-per-views. So we'd go and then I'd be the one tossing people all over the place, you know, when we'd be pretend Royal <laughs> Rumbles and, you know, yeah. so, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, it was like, yeah, sure. Definitely. I'll do that. So, mm -hmm. so we went down and, um, this is how it started. 
this is how it started. This is how the wrestling this is, that, yeah. this is where Brimstone came from. Uh, you know, Ooh. I I went there and um I had met a bunch of people who would eventually essentially become friends of mine mm-hmm. years later. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, you know, legends in, in the industry. Uh, one of them being the Iron Sheik, who just recently passed. I'm going to try not to cry uh, because he was very, very, very uh, essential in, in me becoming a professional wrestler and, um, wow. you know, giving me the opportunity to, to build my name, uh, him and, and Brett, the hitman heart. So um, yeah. what do you call it? When I, I I'll never forget, uh, I walked over and I was with Bill and the bill was going this way. I was going that way. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, what do you call it? Uh, as I'm walking towards the Sheik, uh, Sheiky says, he goes, you look like you could be a wrestler, you know? And, and I said, I said, oh, yeah? He goes, he goes, okay. yeah, I, I train you and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, like he's, he has such a, yeah, thick, wow. a thick accent. And, uh, yeah. you know, and and I, I was just like, wow, OK. Obviously, yeah. in, in the business, we call that working yeah. somebody. And uh, he was trying to work me to get, you know, me to, to, to spend money on him to train me. Um, what do you call it? Right. His his agent at the time, uh, Eric Snapshot Sims, um, who was with him for mm-hmm. many, many years. Uh, Eric uh, then took over and was trying to sell me on it. And uh, okay. what do you call it? And then Brett, uh, because they knew why I was there. They knew I was there to take mm-hmm. pictures for the publication. Uh, Brett had Go known, ahead. you know, I took pictures of Brett earlier. He had overheard this. And um, okay. he said to me, he goes, uh, he goes, uh, you know, uh, come over here. You know, he was on his way to leave. I think he was going to uh, work at a w- WCW show. I think that he was already out of WWF at the time. Uh, now WWE. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. he said to me, he goes, look, if you're really interested in getting in the industry, I heard the conversation you're having mm-hmm. with them over there. Um, but if you're really looking to get in the industry, here's my email address. Um, you know, it was AOL address. It tells you how long ago it was. Uh, he says, okay. you know, drop me an email. I'll see what I could do to to help make sure that you're you know in the right direction. Because he yeah. knew I was from the publication. It wasn't like I was some fanboy. So I said, I said, all right, I, I appreciate that. And um, mm-hmm. I put the thing in my pocket. I took the pictures I had to do. And, uh, you know, and that was that. And um, I Got wound up, um, you know, finding in a magazine, a wrestling magazine. It was a mm-hmm. wrestling school that was opening up in mm-hmm. uh, Queens, New York, uh, that, which then moved to Jamaica. So the Long Island Wrestling mm-hmm. Federation, uh, the Dog House was the name of the school. Uh, Bobby Lombardi was the guy who was running it. And um, it was uh, it was not too far from me. It was about an hour away, 45 minutes away. So I wanted to look into it. And I, I found Brett's uh, email and I sent him an email. I said, look, I found this place. I was considering going. This is who I was. He, he remembered, you know, because um, it wasn't too long after that. And uh, he mm-hmm. told me like a couple of hints of what to look for and um, you know, sent me on my way. I went there. Um, I, I did my my first um you know my first kind of like spin around the place deciding what to do is very like very very <laughs> dungeonish and uh you know dark and dim and whatever and seedy and you know all things that you'd expect from something that you're not yeah. familiar with um and uh yeah. you know and i'll never forget it. i was like i think i'm home you know and i wound up contacting Ooh. a uh i contacted brett um and i said this is all the stuff he goes everything sounds legit uh-huh. you know if you need anything else let me know and i and I didn't. I went and I started training, and the rest is history. Um, you know, we moved God. out of that little seedy place, and uh, you wow. know, moved into a much bigger place that went into to to what do you call it? Um, a better uh, house, Brooklyn. Um, you know, mm-hmm. and and uh, man, I mean, you know, like it was Changed crazy. You know, like I my car had been broken into m- m- like multiple times. Um, you know, while I was in there training. Um, what do you call cool. it? Same thing with with uh, my buddies who I was training with, and. You know, mm-hmm. I, it like it was it was just a, a crazy, crazy time. Um, I got to to uh, to know a lot of the boys, which, you know, came in years later yeah. that, you know, became bigger players also. And, um, you know, just just it was it was a, a really cool time. And I was one of the doghouse originals. And um, that goes a long way, um, you know, being who came God. out of there. So um, I'm yeah. proud to have come from there. And I'm proud that I went there. And that, again, is the beginning yeah. of Brimstone. We, we've been back and forth. Brimstone. Yeah, back and forth. Um, you know, took about like I said, forty five minutes to an hour, if not a little mm. longer, traveling time to get in and out. You know, from home to go to to, to wrestle and uh, to train. So uh, while we were doing that, I'd, I'd sit there and I started with like five hundred different names. Then uh, you know, trying to figure out because again, I was from music, so I know branding yeah. and and bi- and business. So branding, marketing, and everything. sales, everything. You have to know exactly. You have to have something that's yeah. going to be brandable, mo- memorable, marketable. Branding is everything. Yeah. Um, and mm. I said, even though you're not supposed to come up with a gimmick, I was already going to be <laughs> out of the game and I knew what I wanted to do. So I was kind of trying to figure out what it was and 500 yeah. names to 200 to 100, wow. to 75 to 50 to 10. And Brimstone always was there, always made the cut. And I said, you know what? 
that's it. I literally, um, <laughs> that was a big move because, uh, yeah. you know, that was changed your life completely. Yeah. So yeah, that was, this that, is that's the how Brimstone was born. Yeah, yeah. The the story of Brimstone comes from here. You know, you were just a public, uh, just a guy from publication. Someone saw you. Hey, you should be a wrestler. That kind of story happened, and someone trained you, worked on you. You trained. Uh, what was your body size that time? Was it like the same or uh, like one fourth? How? Uh, what was your body size that time? I was I remember? was probably about half my size then, which is funny. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was about half my size then. I'm a big man. Um, yeah. What do you call it? So you know. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't small per se. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like my son now mm -hmm. at, at 22, you know, I, I was like around his size when I was that age also, uh, Ooh, which was, you know, it's nice and broad and so forth. He's, although he's over six feet, I'm not. So <laughs> when I'm, you know, when I wore my, when I wore my, my boots, I had two inch mm -hmm. lifts. So I was always six, two, uh, six in two. the ring. Okay. Um, okay. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. even though I'm five eleven and a half, and there's a lot packed into that half, by the way. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, and yeah, yeah. It, it was wrestling. Wrestling was great, um, you know, but then it also took a huge toll on the body. Um, yeah, uh, but you know, um, it gave me the opportunity to really build my brand and kind of be mm. like, you know what, uh, this is who I am. Um, yeah, and I miss the I music. I still miss music. You know, I love music, and and um, <laughs> you know, when you're not what, doing what you, something, yeah, yeah, go on. When you're not doing something, you know, you, you it's just, you know, uh, you use it or you lose it kind of a thing type, you know, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. I still know how to play. Um, it's not, it's, I'm not, I, if I would have continued playing all these yeah. years, you know, it would have been, you know, I wouldn't have lost what I, what I had and I would have gotten a million times better. Um, and I was good. Yeah. I was a good drummer, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I miss it, but I went from mm -hmm. beating the, the skins of, of drums to tossing people around and, and being physical. So I still uh. had my, my physicality, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know, as a kid, I beat, beat, beat people up, um, yep, yep. <laughs> you know, and then I played drums, just, beat, just, just different beat the drums. drums, just yeah. different drums. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I don't get to yeah. beat people up anymore. It's upsetting. Oh. It's <laughs> I'm just you, you're I'm kind nice of beating guy. the records here. You're kind yeah. of breaking the records here. That's how you're drumming now. Yeah, okay, yeah. great. So drumming, music, uh, entertainment, like uh, acting, advertising, uh, marketing, sales. At this moment, uh, handling your own brand, Brimstone. The story how you became a wrestler. What is the most fulfilling moment? Is it drumming? Is it wrestling? Is it like I heard your voice acting, saw lots of reel, or uh, shooting a film or movie? What's the best? My my most the, the the thing that that is most fulfilling to me is the fact uh that that i have three beautiful children i have my family that's wow. the most fulfilling thing for me um what do you call it i do this not to be you know uh in the public eye or to be famous it, it's mm -hmm. a great it's a great addition to what i do but i do this, this who you are i guess this is who i am this is this is what i do in order to support my family you know um yeah. and to be able to give my my children um you know something to look up to some you know and and things to look forward to to give them a little bit of something that i didn't have growing up um yeah. and and for them to be proud of who their dad was you know and in and be able to continue to remember me long after i'm gone uh the things that i've Legacy. done and things accomplished to to say you know dad was you know something yeah. else you know uh mm. so you know to leave a legacy that's that's one of the biggest that's things for me leaving a legacy um you yeah. know if if God forbid anything happened at this point, you know, there are enough photos out there for them to sit and remember me by there's enough, you know, uh, music, there's, there's, you know, videos, there's, you lots know, animations, you know uh, what I mean? Yeah. Toys, this, yeah. that, that there's so much to remember me by, um, that, that, you know, that's, that's leaving and positive, you know what I mean? Things that that's leaving a, a great legacy behind, uh, and I'm still mm -hmm. not done yet, but that's the most fulfilling yeah. thing to me, my family, my kids. God, this is what you are, but for you, the most fulfilling like being with your kids being with your family having dinner uh spending time uh whatever time you get at this moment i guess you're traveling a lot but whatever time you get up and you get to chat with your kids and all uh you feel that's that's life for you that's the real life this is what you do for a living uh absolutely thank you thank you for, yeah thank you for sharing that and now we jump on your comic book series brimstone and the bounder hunts border hunts mm -hmm. uh, that series has achieved significant success can you tell us about the creative process behind the series and how it has evolved over the years? Um, so the Brimson of the Border Hound series, um, when it was time for me to kind of uh, get out of wrestling, now I have no 
no disrespect to anybody who's still in the industry after a certain age. Um, I still miss being in the ring, but I mm -hmm. didn't want to be in my elder years uh, bumping around okay. in the ring and, and you know, um, oh, having yeah. that be my right. sole source of income. So I mm -hmm. wanted to kind of transition my way out um, and do it with class. And I wanted to still continue to build on the Brimstone brand because, again, um, you know, you know, it, it's 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 a Come brand, on. you know, and that's that's yeah, my yeah, livelihood. Yeah. So, you know, I um, I thought to myself, I always loved comics. I always yeah. wanted to do this, something in comics. Yeah. So, it's like childhood love. yeah, let me put together a comic book because um, what mm -hmm. what are pro wrestlers? Pro wrestlers are comic book characters. Um, you know what I mean? They're real live, you know, yeah. come, to, come to life, smashing uh, people's know, characters. So, yeah. you know, so we're superheroes, we get in the ring, we're larger than life, you know, you do yeah. your thing and, mm -hmm. and so forth. So for me, yeah. um, you know, it was, it was very important to kind of take my character out of the ring. And mm -hmm. then what do you call it? Um, what I did was I took the wrestling out of it because again, mm -hmm. wrestling in a comic book is not as exciting per mm -hmm. se as oh, taking the character wow. and, and acting as though, you know, you're, uh, you know, I'm building a whole universe around it. And uh, oh, so I took the wrestling out of it. Of, and, uh, Brimstone. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Brimstone, you know, where in, in wrestling is, you know, the old school gimmick. And he's the uh, the protector of, of Hell's Gates and blah, blah, blah. And, wow. <laughs> which, by the way, which, by the way, <laughs> I, I'm going to you can you, you may or may not laugh about this. Uh, but I I don't believe in hell. Jews don't believe in hell. I, my, okay. my whole gimmick, my whole shtick is a big it's a joke it was meant as a joke oh. because brimstone okay. as being from hell and so forth everybody oh my god <laughs> he's a devil worshiper this is no oh. i'm okay. jewish i'm a very proud jew and jews don't believe in hell yeah. so what do you call yeah. it? it it's it's a that being said it's it's very um mm -hmm. it's that it was a funny anyway uh, that was yeah yeah, yeah. it was always you, meant you to, made fun of it yeah, fun to, of that to make fun of myself where people go you're so serious and uh, you know people have always, would always <laughs> talk smack about me it's like you know yeah, yeah i am serious about my business i'm serious about my brand but mm. i'm not taking myself that seriously because this is what ah. the whole background is and i'm joking it's, yeah. it's a big joke it's it's like so, entertaining uh, people at the end of the day exactly so um yeah. you know my my uh <laughs> so so brimstone uh you know we we made it I, I when i wanted to go into the comics i wasn't sure how to write the comic so i contacted one of my good friends uh marcello okay. carnavale who i'll, I'll always mm -hmm. still give credit to uh, i said you know i'd like to take the character and transform him into a comic character and um mm -hmm. what do you call it we went to uh, to sit down and talk uh which was probably be like an hour of of a coffee you know to to sit and discuss it turned out being like four or five hours sitting there writing the entire bible of what brimstone of the border hounds would be oh yeah and um mm -hmm. you know we took took the the comic industry by storm um yep. what do you call it we we uh, were the first independently owned and operated comic in every single barnes and noble and b dalton in the country uh we launched in borders books before borders books uh shut mm -hmm. down and that's when i went into barnes and noble and b dalton's um good i i went ham i went to town um and i built everything off of that i wound up i had um um you know all my um I had a uh, video how games. Many years? I had toys. I had this, that, and the next thing. What was that? How many years it took to actually uh, publish to get the, it going? Um, comic. Yeah, about a year. About a year. Yeah. Um, yeah. The whole research and that was and because the, the read. No, the the what took a year was to get the art team together. Um, because oh. I didn't want hired guns. I wasn't going to pay people to sit and do the book. I wanted people mm. that wanted to have a piece of the company because they're going to work harder, uh, or you would think that they'd work yeah, harder. That's, um, that, that's a real big thing. Yeah, I wanted to put together a group of people who were interested in not building just a comic, not just building, mm -hmm. you know, making a couple of bucks, but who wanted to excel and be able to go further from here. Um, and yeah. what do you call I gave an opportunity and I promised them, I said, I promise you that if you if we do this, not only are you going to have a piece of this, you got a piece of everything that we have underneath it, as long as you stay with the company. I said, yeah. and on top of that, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I, I promise you, you will get. A ridiculous amount of publicity i said because <laughs> this is what i do i know what i'm doing and yeah, uh that's your life now i was a man of my word and everybody mm -hmm. got a lot more than what they even anticipated at the beginning and uh okay. you know like my my lead artist sajad shah at this point is doing marvel and dc and image and wow. you know drawing for everybody and uh, awesome. doing work like he's doing amazing things and uh you know like it, it i just you know bringing people to the dance has always been something i do and um 
I always bring people up with me, you know, even with, with yeah. Grindhouse Radio. And I know up. we haven't even gotten to that. But Grindhouse Radio, mm -hmm. these my, my partners were my interns. You know what I mean? Um, you know, you what? always want to elevate people. Always elevate oh, people. Um, a good leader will always elevate and uh, yes, bring people yes. with them. So, um, yeah, the Brimstone and Border Hounds that's thing, how, you know. It was, that's it was how a you very, got it. Yeah. It was a very yeah. big, big thing. And, um, you know, I leveraged the, the Brimstone name. Uh, you know, to get into a lot of the conventions uh, to help push the comic book series. So rather than, you know, go in and, and get paid to be there, um, you know, I would go in and I would leverage for space for Hound Comics, which was my business. Um, and then the bigger Hound got, the more people wanted then to pay me to come in and do, you know, appearances for Hound and Brimstone and this and that, yeah. um, you know, and, and yeah, I mean, the, the list goes on. Good, good, good. Tell me about you being a philanthropist. Uh, you support lots of NGOs. And um, what are the major causes uh, that you put your voice for, that you support a lot, and that you are very passionate about that this needs to be done? Go in, ahead. in terms of philanthropy, I mean, I do a lot. I do a lot mm -hmm. of, of okay. uh, appearances and so forth for um, for charity. Um, because, I, you know, again, I think I get that from my mother. It's very important to give back to people and to those um, you know, who helped put you there, uh, who helped put me in this mm -hmm. position for one and two, the people that are less fortunate. Um, you know, I, I will always go above and beyond to try to help those people out, but who, who are, are more, uh, needy in terms of, of not being able to take care of themselves, uh, as animals. Yeah. Um, and I'm very, very, very close, uh, knit working with a uh, sweet briar, uh, which is a nature preserve that is here where okay. I live on Long Island in New York. Um, and mm -hmm. I do a lot of work with them. My daughter actually is volunteering for them. My little one uh, is volunteering okay. for them. And I, I go there and I'll, I'll sit and I'll hang out for the day when they do events. Um, I'll host other events for them and, you know, and try to try to bring them, you know, some stuff whenever I have the chance. Um, but Sweet Briar Nature Preserve, that's one of the, the places that I pulled near and dear. Okay. And that's the one charity that I um, have been spending a lot of time with or more time okay. with recently. Good. So um, now we jump on your movies. You've done a lot of so lots of movies. You've been popular shows, MTVs, and then um, in in like popular uh, mainstream movies. Uh, any upcoming movie that you have or anything that's released? Uh, where can people find your movies? Please share about them. So I'm I'm in a lot of different things. Uh, some I could talk about. Some I can't talk about. Um, okay. What do you call it? Right now, I know I'm uh, director's cut is currently on Amazon Prime. Um, yeah. What do you call it? I have. Uh, Oh my God. See, there's a lot of things. The problem is some things I have a lot of things that are filmed that I'm not allowed to talk about <laughs> with NDAs. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's just Anything say close to your to heart. See... Any, any film close to your heart. You, you'll be able to see me on, on a, a big show in its final season on Showtime uh, within the next month, I believe, um, coming into September. Okay. Um, cool. I have a lot of different animations, uh, a lot of different video games that you hear my voice in. Um, mm -hmm. What yeah. do you call it? Uh, Preacher 6 is mm -hmm. um is a movie that i'm really really excited for it to finally launch um i'm told okay. it's finally gonna come out this year it's been years in the making this thing um what do you call it COVID hit and they had issues and so forth but it's an independent film that i think is gonna have a lot of legs you know what i mean um so mm -hmm. i'm really excited about that i did a bunch though i you know i've, I've done a whole bunch of different things and um, yep, yep. you know, I just, I just enjoy, you know, kind of getting involved in doing it, whether it's a cameo or a role, you know what I mean? It's just a lot. Of yeah, fun. yeah. Just, just, you enjoy the process. You enjoy, you are the process guy, you know, any exactly. project, any small role, just make me part of it. And I, I'm That's happy it. just to be part. Of it. Yeah. You've got That's it. it. I, so to everyone, yep, yep, yep. To yeah. everyone, uh, just go and check out. I'm linking below the IMDB. You can find lots of projects that he did. There's a specific reel of his voice acting. Uh, the projects that he was involved in, one of the major is Naruto. And to uh, lots, lots of lots of projects. We can't name a single project at this moment. That's why I, I'm ensuring that you go and check out the IMDB profile where you can check out his movies. And I guess most of the movies will be coming on the OTT platforms. So uh, like Amazon Prime, uh, maybe the pin code something is different for us for india for other countries so it may some of them may be available only in us and some of them are available globally uh, yeah. so that's it you make sure you go and check out the imdb and watch out his work so yeah that's uh, yeah. and you can find out just by googling his name brimstone and the brand name that's the brand name you can just google it and you'll find all the stuff uh, uh as 
TheRealBrimstone.com is my official website. Um, also, just to add on to that, I know Seymour the, Unfun- the Unfortunate Vampire, um, which is a really cool film. Uh, that's going to be out on Amazon Prime soon. Uh, Re- Re- Revelation, I do a little uh, cameo in. And right now, mm-hmm. anybody who's into food, if you're into barbecue, um, mm-hmm. my what do you call it? My son is on a show called Barbecue Country on the Country okay. Network, which you can also find on uh, Sling and Roku mm-hmm. and and uh, all that jazz YouTube for the older shows. Uh, and I'm on it as well. I do cameos on there and hang out with my son, wow. which was an amazing opportunity. Uh, so, Great. yeah, and he won the first round. So what do you call it? We don't know where it's going from there, guys. All I know is it's yeah. all filmed, but I can't quite, tell you quite, what happens. Right. So, so, so that's what you were talking about last, last. I guess last week we talked about, uh, we chatted on Instagram and that you said that you were with your son. And that's the show that we are talking about at this moment. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'm wishing I'm wishing all the best uh, to him and to Thank you, you and the whole support. Uh, Thank you. Keeping the all thing that he wins, praying for that. And uh, now, now here's the last question. As a mentor of score men, as a mentor for score mentors, you provide guidance and support to aspiring entrepreneurs. What motivated you to take on this role? So um, I am on hold with score right now because I'm just too busy okay. to, to mentor anybody right now. Although mm-hmm, I still mm-hmm. mentor a couple of people from it. Um, but when uh, the the uh, my, the Grindhouse Radio, which is one of my main businesses, and we do between three and a half, four million listeners a week worldwide, it's pop culture yep. talk. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, what do you call it? And I also do the Dirty Little Secrets Club, which is another big show that's uh, talk. It's just a little more risque. Uh, but we, for, for Grindhouse, we were um, winning a, uh, we, had, we were up for uh, winning a small business awards, um, the SCORE Small Business Awards. And um, okay. SCORE is a... For people who aren't aware, SCORE is a, a, a company that, or I guess a resource for small businesses who need help uh, getting themselves to the next level. They need uh, advice. They need to know, you know, how to move from A to B to C all the way to Z. I was getting people that were emailing me from all around the country uh, asking for help. Um, and now this is everything okay. from, you know, from art businesses to, you know, to musicians to, you know, to um, what do you call it? To axe throwing places, to liquor things, and er- <laughs> all different businesses that were creative style businesses. Um, and I helped them. I helped a lot of them. I, I went probably in the time that I was doing it actively. I probably helped about 300 and change uh, different companies, all oh. who were doing, you know, who are probably going to die. Um, and I, I helped put them and, and have them become sustainable. Um, you know, and, and to this day, I have a bunch of them that still thank me, you know, at least once every couple of months, you know, Hey, Bram, I just want to let you know that if it weren't for you, I wouldn't be doing this and this and this. And that for me is truly satisfying. Um, a lot of them told me, you know, look, the, the mentors we had before we were, we got with you were just, I mean, it was abysmal. Uh, they told us we should just close down our business and, 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 uh, and, and do something different because you can't have a, an, a, you know, somebody who does taxes, you can't have an accountant, you know what I mean? Tell a painting person how to run their painting business. You know what I mean? <laughs> just, so, just, just basic um, things. Yeah. It's just, just it, it is what things. it is. So, yeah, um, yeah, I wound up changing it. a lot of people's lives and that, that was fulfilling to me. Great to, great to hear that from you. Uh, here's, here's the last minute that we have, sure. uh, in this in this last minute, any uh, piece of advice for aspiring artists who admire you a lot, and uh, for those who don't know you but uh, want to hear from you, who's so much experienced and reached a level that uh, they want to okay, this this guy's really good, and I'd like to hear what he has for me as an aspiring artist in this last minute. So you know, never give up, never surrender, always move forward, always always you know be in here, not always in here, in here. Um, uh, mm-hmm. because your head could tell you many things. Your head could tell you yeah. to give up. Your head could tell you to, to, you know, just do something that is, that, you know, is, is going to pay off in the end rather than, you know, work hard, work hard, put your passion in, put all your yeah. beliefs in and, and mm-hmm. you will win at the end. You know what I mean? Your heart yeah. should always overpower your brain. Um, and, and, uh, never, never give up because a lot of people always give up right before they actually make you know, get that next level. A lot of people do, and they're literally, they don't realize it, but they're right on the cusp. Um, You know, always, always put your best foot forward. You never know who else is paying attention. Um, And if there's ever anybody out there that, um, you know, would like to follow me, you know, I'm at Mm -hmm. the real brimstone on Instagram. I spend most of my, my um, social media time on Instagram. And uh, as long as you message me and it's respectful and I see it, because again, I get a lot of messages. If I see it, I, it's me responding to you. I will Mm. respond to you. Okay. Um, hopefully, and, uh, I will give you the, the, as much 
uh, help as I can. Um, but again, there's just so much I can do. Don't send me your Kickstarters. Don't send me your, you know, <laughs> things like <laughs> I don't do it. I'm not okay, reposting okay. them. Um, but you know, if you have a serious, uh, question or, you know, you, you, you need help, um, you know, mm -hmm. with something, uh, you know, I I'm always welcome to receiving those messages as long as you're yeah. supporting me and paying attention to what I do as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I, I greatly yep. appreciate that, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Brim. Uh, thank you for being on the show. Firstly, to everyone who's listening at this moment, uh, this guy who's sitting in front of me is not the guy who, can, who we can cover in one hour. He has lots of lots of uh, things to say and he has done a lot of work. He does it by himself. It's not easy to cover this in 50 minutes or 45, 50, 60 minutes. Uh, I hope that we can get him in a few months to do another part of this. But at sure. this moment, it's very yeah, it's very hard to cover all those uh, things that he does, like his podcast, uh, his license, uh, his comics, and all lots of stuff. But at this moment, I am just uh, like, uh, thank you for being kind. Thank you for being on the show. And thank you for making your time available. Thank you for mailing me at the last moment. Hey, I'm in the traffic because I was leaving the office. I was like, 10 minutes away from the office and then I saw the mail. So this was really, really urgent thing that happened. Um, <laughs> just want to say that uh, so this is something that I can't cover in 60 minutes, the whole story of Brimstone. But uh, I am. I think that we covered much major part of how Brimstone happened and how he started. Uh, for him, family comes first. Uh, that's the one thing that matters to him a lot. You can see his brand value and all the stuff, but that for him, that's what he do, does for a living. And he, only wants family to be with him and that's brimstone for you thank you thank you so much brim thank you for your time honor and a privilege thank you so much for having me and uh hope to see you again real soon